Today I'm going to show you how the power door lock systems work in your car. Now the power door lock system can be operated using three methods. The first of which is the traditional key style method. The second of which is the keyless entry method. And the third of which is the toggle switch on the front door. Now the guts of the power door lock system is buried within the latch mechanism itself. So we're going to need to remove the door panel to have a closer look. So here we are with the door panel removed. We have the lock striker over here that's held on by three bolts. We've also got these two cables over here that go to the lock and door handle respectively. And here we have the child safety lockout that prevents this handle from operating this door latch. Now the door strike actually has two positions, the first of which just catches the door, and the second of which actually locks it against the body of the car. I could then use the handle to release it off. Now in order to disassemble this lock, there's two 10 millimeter bolts, one on either side that hold on this door handle. And I'm gonna pull out this door handle over here, and you can see it's just a lever mechanism that pulls up, which actually pushes this little rod down into the mechanism over there. So I'm just gonna come in here and disconnect this. I'm going to remove these Torx bolts here. Inside of the door cavity through the door handle here we have the lock actuator and latch assembly. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. So here I have the handle, lock and latch assembly removed from the vehicle. As I pull on this handle here you can clearly see that this rod is actually going to push down. Now it's actually going to push down on this little tab over here which is what's going to unlock the latch from the door. Now this lock actuator only has two wires running to it. Other vehicles will actually have a built-in lock detection switch to tell if it's in the locked or unlocked state for the alarm system. But this vehicle probably uses the door switch. So if we take a little tour of this guy, you can see we've got the latch mechanism over there. And then we've got these two lines here that run out to the interior door handle. So we've got a little plastic cover that covers everything here. I'm just going to rip it off. There we go. So here we have a good look at the latch mechanism from the inside. The top cable here leads to the interior door handle. You can see when I pull that, a bunch of levers move. And the bottom cable here leads to the door lock mechanism on the inside. I'll just disconnect these cables here so we can get them out of the way. So when I pull on the interior door handle, what happens is this little C-shaped member here pivots about this point over here. We've got another little member underneath here that comes off of it and translates up and down. And that's actually connected to this exterior door handle connection over here, which pivots about this point over here. All of that comes together to activate this little notch over here to turn this cam, and this cam then deactivates the latch over here to open the door. Now what happens when you lock the door is this cam here actually moves the slider mechanism away so this tooth can no longer engage with this cam on the latch, and instead it just skips right past it. Therefore you cannot use the exterior or the interior door handle to unlatch that door. Now the interior door handle has a little bit of play before it actually engages and when it does engage it also engages the exterior door handle tab over here. However the exterior door handle doesn't actually open when you open the interior door handle. That's because it's got this little hole over here that actually allows this rod to translate up and down so that that way the connections are not linked. However when the exterior door handle is engaged it'll just push down on that tab which will then unlock the door. But we've got this little slider inside of here that prevents the exterior door handle's movement from being transferred over to the interior door handle. Now the child lock off, you can see we have the interior door handle that will engage this tab over here on the inside and that's what's going to open the door. However, if I slide this guy over, it's actually going to move the entire slider mechanism over causing this tab to skip past that tab and therefore your interior door handle has been disabled. However, the exterior door handle can still unlock the door. Now while the interior door lock cable connects over here, this little cam that pivots about this main pivot point here actually has a third connection over here and that goes to this little lever that's electronically powered by a motor inside of the lock actuator. Therefore the lock actuator can power up and give you power door locks electronically by moving the mechanism back and forth. And here's a better look at that arm from the other side. Now the lock actuator is just held on by two Phillips screws that I'm going to remove next. And I can just remove that lock actuator and you can see this is the little lever arm that moves back and forth electronically. I have no idea why it says R on it. And this side says L, maybe you can actually flip it around, but this actually came from a left-handed door. Alright, now it's time to wreck this open. Now inside of the actuator you can see we have a standard 12 volt DC motor that has a spiral gear that turns this helical gear over here. When the helical gear spins up, this little notch over here is actually going to move this tab on the smaller gear over for a further gear reduction. And that's actually going to move this quarter gear over here, which is in turn going to move this 
arm to either lock or unlock the door. Now the reason why it's not just a straight gear ratio is to allow for extra free play so that the door lock can be locked and unlocked manually from inside. Now looking closely you can see there's actually a little arm inside of there that sticks up and slides inside of here to make a little cam slider mechanism. So it's actually activating something down below. I'm going to remove the screw that holds this actuator on and I can pop off this arm here and that'll allow me to pop this quarter gear up and pull it out. And you can see that arm that I was talking about earlier that moves back and forth. And then remove this little small gear here. And things are actually getting pretty greasy inside of here, so I'm just going to come with my brother's old trousers and wipe up all that grease. And now if I lift off this gear over here, you can see we've got like a little spiral on the inside here. On the bottom of this gear we have this other tab here that actually engages with a spring to move it back and forth to give it self-centering spring pressure. And I'll just use my brother's toothbrush to pick up that spring. Boy, do they really put a lot of grease in this. Just gonna have to wipe this up again. Now further underneath that spring I have the spring retainer. What the? There's actually electrical contacts underneath. So much grease on here, I don't even know how these contacts will actually conduct. This is basically the moment where I have no idea what's going on inside of here and why Nissan's chose to do this kind of design over just a thermistor. So how all this works together is we've got the motor over here that's powered by this little circuit going on inside of here. There's actually two diodes inside of here. Now diodes actually work like one-way valves for electricity and these are actually facing the opposite direction. So if we have positive polarity current flowing in through here, it's going to go through this diode over here and sit over here waiting for this little piece to bridge the gap between these two contacts over here. Now this piece with the contacts on it is actually locked to this quarter gear over here and is related to the position of the lock itself. So for example if it's sitting on this side it's in the unlocked state. It's going to bridge the gap between here turning the motor backwards. That's then in turn going to turn this helical gear against the spring pressure and then turn the lock to the locked state which is going to move it back over to this part. Now these contacts have then moved to the lock position and are now bridging the gap over here and have unbridged the gap over here causing an open circuit and the motor to come to a complete stop in the lock position. Now when you want to unlock it you send positive polarity over to this part which is going to go through the motor through the diode and sit over here and as long as this piece is sitting in its lock position this gap is going to be bridged. It's going to then turn on the motor to spin the gear this way the gap is not going to be bridged anymore and it's actually going to bridge the gap over here which is going to cause an open circuit then the motor is going to stop in the unlock position. Now the reason for all this crazy circuitry is actually to prevent the motor from overheating because you can't lock a locked door nor can you unlock an unlocked door so what it does is it presents an open circuit if the voltage being sent to it commands it to move in the same direction that it's already in. So in essence it kind of acts like a stopper so the motor isn't just grinding its gears inside of here. Now while this mechanism forms the mechanicals of the power door lock system, the other aspect to it is the electrical side that controls it all. So here we have a schematic diagram of the power door lock system in this vehicle with the body control unit in the middle here. It takes power from the battery here and sends it to each actuator in order to lock or unlock the door. Interestingly, it also unlocks the fuel lit actuator. This is all dependent on the position of the lock and unlock switch on the driver or passenger door. It also interfaces with the door switches on each door to know if they're open. Here we have the body control unit and it's responsible for controlling the entire door lock system as well as other body functions. It's typically located underneath the dashboard where the fuse box is. We've also got the remote control receiver which will receive commands from the keyless entry and send it over to the body control unit which will then control the door locks accordingly. Now with the keyless entry we have the receiver that feeds the body control unit over here and it then sends signals out to the power window and door lock systems respectively. Now because this has trunk and panic functions it also interfaces with the trunk, the horn and the lights as well. So the next time you lock or unlock your car doors think of all the components that are inside to make it work. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes footage and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Oh shoot, I locked my key in.